Hello everyone. Today's reading is from the Pinky and Rex books. This one is titled Pinky and Rex Go to Camp. It was written by James Howe and illustrated by Melissa Sweet. On the back where the summary is gives us a little description of what the book is about and it says Pinky and Rex are going to camp for the first time. Rex tells, keeps telling Pinky how much fun they're going to have, but Pinky just wants to stay home where he belongs. Can the Dear Arnie column in the newspaper help Pinky figure out what to do? Arnie gives Pinky some good advice, and so does Pinky's mother, but it's his best friend Rex who tells Pinky what he really needs to know. The first chapter is titled Camp Wakatuchi. Pinky! Pinky! Rex knocked loudly on Pinky's front door. I got my letter! She cried. Did you get yours? Pinky came to the door and opened it slowly. Yes, he said, letting his friend in. What's so exciting about it? What's so exciting about it? It tells us all the stuff we need to bring with us to Camp Wakatuchi. And look, said Rex, pointing to one of the papers in her hands. Here's the camp song. My dad's been teaching me the melody. Before he could stop her, Rex burst out singing at the top of her lungs. Boom, boom, boom. Hear the Tom Toms beat. Camp Wakatuchi, you are so neat. Blue and orange, orange and blue. Camp Wakatuchi, we love you. Around the teepee, we gather nightly to sing camp songs and do what's righty. We will miss you when we go home, but in our hearts, we'll never roam. Rex beams, isn't that the greatest song? She asked. Uh-huh, said Pinky flatly, the greatest. Um, Rex, I have to go clean up my room now. And he turned and headed up the stairs. Rex followed after him. What's the matter, Pinky? She said. I thought you wanted to go to sleepaway camp. I do, said Pinky. He led Rex into his room, which wasn't messy at all. Who said I didn't? Well, you're acting kind of funny. I just don't feel so good, said Pinky. Amanda made muffins for breakfast. I think maybe she left something out. So here is Pinky and Rex in Pinky's bedroom. I heard that Pinky's little sister Amanda stood scowling at the door. I didn't leave anything out of those muffins and you know it, Pinky. They were scrumptious. Mom even said so. Moms have to say things like that, said Pinky. He flopped down on his bed. Hmm, said Amanda, crossing her arms. She was about to leave the room when she turned back and said to Rex, I heard you singing that dumb song. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I'm not going away to camp. Poison ivy, snakes, cougars. Forget it. And I'll tell you one other thing. Those camp counselors may look like real people, but at night they turn into monsters and they'll eat you up while you're sleeping. With her nose in that air, Amanda flounced out of the room. Don't listen to her, Rex. But it was too late. Pinky already had. Chapter two, Dear Arnie. That night after dinner, Pinky wrote a letter to Arnie. Arnie was someone who gave people advice about their problems. The letters and Arnie's answers appeared in the newspaper in a column called Dear Arnie. That is what Pinky wrote first, Dear Arnie. Then he stopped and chewed on his pencil for a minute while he thought of what to write next. When he had figured it out, he wrote, My mom and dad are making me go away to camp, and this is not something I want to do. It all started because my best friend is going, and so my mom and dad got this idea that I wanted to go too. 
but I don't, like I said. Please answer my letter soon, because camp starts in three weeks, and if I have to go, I will probably run away, which I don't want to do either, because the whole thing is, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay home, where I belong. Sincerely, and then Pinky stopped writing. He knew that people who wrote letters to Arnie always made up names for themselves. He wasn't sure why. It was probably because they didn't want their friends making fun of them. He thought for a long time, then he wrote, Sincerely, Miserable Max. P.S. Miserable Max isn't my real name. And here's Pinky writing his letter to Dear Arnie. Pinky read the letter over carefully. It was a good letter, he thought, and he was proud of the fact he hadn't had to look up the spelling of any of the words, not even miserable. Then he carefully copied Arnie's address from the newspaper, put the letter into an envelope, and put the envelope under his pillow. He would mail it first thing the next morning. And here's Pinky turning in for the night with the letter under his pillow. Chapter three, practice. Every day, Pinky checked the newspaper for Arnie's answer to his letter. Two weeks went by. Arnie answered a man whose wife snored so loudly he couldn't sleep. He answered a woman who didn't know how to tell her husband that his cooking was making her sick. He answered a girl whose parents wouldn't let her get her ears pierced. But he didn't answer Pinky Pinky began to worry that Arnie had never received his letter. All the while, Rex was getting more and more excited about camp. Come on, she said to Pinky one Sunday morning. It's a perfect day for practicing your fastball. She kept slamming a ball into the catcher's mitt she had gotten for her last birthday. What fastball? Pinky muttered. Anyway, I don't want to practice, Rex. Let's ride our bikes. And here's Pinky sitting on his steps and Arnie wanting to practice the fastball. Oh, Pinky, Rex said, we can ride our bikes anytime. We need to get in shape for camp. Just think, two whole weeks of softball and volleyball and tennis and swimming and boating and okay okay said pinky the more rex talked the more pinky's stomach began to hurt my dad's been practicing with me every night when he comes home from work rex said as they ran across the yard i'll show you some of the neat stuff he taught me she tossed pinky her mitt first you catch and i'll throw she said you ready Ready as I'll ever be, said Pinky. He watched as Rex squinted her eyes, wound up her pitching arm, and sent the ball flying so fast he could hardly see where it was going. He scrambled to catch it, but missed by a few feet and tumbled into a bush. So there's Pinky lying down in the bush after missing Rex's throw. You weren't trying, Rex shouted as she ran to retrieve the ball. Was too, Pinky shouted back. He could feel his cheeks growing hot. Pinky missed the next ball, and the next, and the next. Finally, he threw the mid on the ground and said, Forget it, Rex. I'm no good. You just need practice, said Rex. My dad says... Practice makes, but Pinky didn't wait to find out what Rex's dad said. He was already most of the way home. Next chapter, orange and blue. The next day, Pinky's mother took him shopping for camp clothes. Amanda came along. I don't know why mom's wasting money on new clothes when you're only going to end up being eaten by camp counselors. Amanda whispered in Pinky's ear after Pinky had tried on about a million shirts and pairs of shorts. Or who knows, maybe you'll fall in the lake and the piranha fish will get you. 
Stop it, Amanda, said Pinky. He looked up at the pile of clothes on the counter. Everything was orange and blue. These were not his favorite colors. Why do I have to wear those, he grumbled. Because everyone is asked to wear Camp Wakatuchi colors, his mother told him. Besides, Pinky, it will be a nice change from what you're usually wearing. Everyone needs a change now and then. I don't, Pinky said, but so softly that no one heard. After they had bought everything Pinky needed for camp, his mother suggested that they stop for ice cream. As she dug into her hot fudge sundae, Amanda licked her lips and said cheerfully, You know, Pinky, you're not going to be able to take your stuffed animals to camp with you. This thought hadn't occurred to Pinky before. He looked at Amanda with his wide eyes. So guess what, she went on. I'm going to keep them all in my room. No way, Pinky said. He said it so loudly, the people at the next table looked over to see what was going on. Well, you're not going to be here, Amanda said, so there's nothing you can do about it. So here they are, sitting at the table, Pinky, Amanda, and their mother. And they're making so much noise that the people at the next table are looking over to see what's going on. Mom, Pinky fair, fairly shouted. Shh, said Pinky's mother. Then turning to Amanda, she said, Pinky's animals will stay in his room where they belong. But, end of discussion. I don't want Pinky to have to worry about his animals while he's gone. But mom, said Pinky, can I even take Pretzel? Pretzel was a pig and Pinky's favorite. Of course you can. Pinky smiled as Amanda stuck out her tongue at him, but his smile quickly faded. He wondered what else he might have to worry about while he was away. Two whole weeks. Amanda could cause a lot of trouble in two whole weeks. He thought about getting a lock for his room, but he knew his parents wouldn't let him. Suddenly, he wasn't hungry anymore. If you aren't going to finish that, Amanda said, eyeing his half-eaten dish of ice cream. I will. Chapter 5. Arnie's Answer. It was the day before camp was to begin. Pinky had stayed in his bedroom with the door closed all morning. He had told his mother he was going to pack, but instead he'd spent the whole time reading comic, comics and thinking about running away from home. Amanda was at day camp, so the house was very quiet. All at once, there was a knock on his door. Pinky? His mother called softly. May I come in? Pinky jumped up. Quickly, he threw a suitcase on the bed and tossed some clothes into it. Um, sure, he said. The door opened. Pinky's mother entered with a newspaper tucked under her arm. Almost finished packing, she asked. Sort of, said Pinky. His mother smiled when she saw the jumble of clothes on the bed. Pack the way your father packs, she said. Then she unfolded the newspaper. May we talk for a minute, Pinky? Pinky's mother moved the suitcase and sat down on the bed. There's something I'd like you to see, she said, patting the bed. Pinky sat down next to her. He saw at once that the newspaper was open to Dear Arnie. I think you'll find that this first letter is very interesting, she said. Pinky could hardly believe it. There, at last, was his letter to Arnie. He didn't bother reading it. It was all there, every word. There, too, was Arnie's answer. Dear Miserable Max, If this is your first time staying away from home, I can understand why you don't want to go. 
After all, it can be very scary to leave everything you know and stay someplace brand new. But I would guess your parents know you well enough that they feel you'd be just fine. Besides, camp is a great growing experience. Believe it or not, you'll feel a lot older by the time you come home. Pinky smirked. What did he care about feeling a lot older? Then he read, P.S. Have you told your parents how you feel? Pinky didn't know what to say. Luckily, his mother spoke first. You know, Pinky, you never told us you didn't want to go to camp. What do you mean? Pinky asked. Then, pretended to laugh, he said, <laughs> Oh, I get it. You, you, you think I wrote this letter, but, but Mom, my, my name isn't Max. And anyway, it doesn't matter if you wrote the letter or not. What matters is what you want. Do you want to go to Camp Wakatuchi? Be honest. Pinky sat for a long time. Being honest was going to be hard. Finally, he said, No, I really don't. His mother nodded her head and thought for a minute. What she said next surprised Pinky. Well then, you don't have to go. We'll discuss it with your father after dinner tonight, but I just want you to know right now that we're not going to force you to do this. Okay, Pinky? Pinky was so relieved he almost felt like crying. Okay, he said and he gave his mother a big hug. And here they are in Pinky's room, and Pinky's giving his mom a hug. Chapter six, Telling Rex. It was decided. Pinky was not going to Camp Wakatuchi. His father didn't say anything about the money. His mother never mentioned the clothes she had bought for him. Only Amanda said something about how he'd probably be afraid of being eaten by camp counselors and he was just a big coward. But after he talked with his parents, Pinky went across the street to break the news to Rex. All the way over, he practiced what he would say. But when Rex saw him coming, she didn't give him a chance to say anything. Follow me! She said, running to her backyard. The two friends sat side by side on the swings. I have something to tell you, Rex told Pinky. Pinky looked at her, wondering what she was about to say. I'm scared about going to camp, Rex said. Really? Pinky stopped swinging. I thought you wanted to go. Well, I do, Rex said. But I'm scared. I can't tell my dad because he's so excited about my going to the same camp he used to go to. And I can't tell my mom because she'd tell my dad. But I knew I could tell you, Pinky, because we're best friends. Are you scared too? Well, yes. Good, Rex said. And then she laughed. I don't mean it's good you're scared. But I'm glad I'm not the only one. You know, Pinky, if you weren't going to camp with me, I'd be really, really scared instead of just a little scared. And here's Pinky and Rex talking on Rex's swing. Pinky wasn't sure what to say. Are you all packed? Rex asked. I am. No, said Pinky. Then you better hurry up, Rex said. The camp bus is picking us up first thing in the morning. Pinky knew this was the time to tell Rex he wasn't going, but he didn't tell her that. Instead, he said, okay, I'll see you in the morning. And he ran home to pack. Chapter seven, Dear Amanda. Dear Amanda, Pinky wrote after his first week at camp. 
I am having a great time here at Camp Wakatuchi. I learned how to shoot a bow and arrow, and I can swim underwater without nose plugs. My counselor's name is Bill. He said to tell you that counselors do not like to eat campers, but they do like to eat little sisters with ketchup. Rex said to tell you hi. Even though the boys' camp is on one side of the lake and the girls' camp is on the other side, Rex and I see each other every day at TP time. Well, I have to go now. I hope you will get to go to camp someday, Amanda. Maybe it'll help you grow up. Signed, your brother, Pinky. Dear Pinky, Amanda wrote back, Watch out for the alligators! <laughs> All right. I hope you guys like this book as much as I did. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon. Bye.